everyone. So we got chapter 3 of the Amori manga. They usually come out on the 24th, but this one actually came out a couple days early, which is nice. So this opening of this chapter is completely different from the game. Well, not completely, but it's very different from the game. Uh, but I'm not necessarily complaining about that. It opens with Kel and Sunny still looking for Aubrey to get Basil's photo album back and aren't having much luck. And then they see these uh, hooligans running full speed from something. And amongst these hooligans is Kim, which is part of Aubrey's crew and they figure she knows where Aubrey is so they start running after her and yelling like hey where is Aubrey and she's like I'm not telling you shit so Sonny and Kel decide to do this amazing combo here I love this so Sonny finds like a soda can and throws it at Kim and it just flops on the floor and doesn't get anywhere near her and she's like man what a wimp you are nice try and kel runs up and kicks the shit out of the can and it slams into kim's head i thought this was hilarious not only was this not in the game but it's also in character like kel is the sports guy and sunny knows that so they pulled this combo out on her which i think is amazing so she finally stops after getting hit in the head by the can and they tell her we want answers then they get rudely interrupted because we find out she was running from the girl that works at the candy shop because she stole a bunch of candy so candy shop girl threatens to call the cops and it turns to a whole big thing but Sunny gets the idea of giving money to the candy shop girl to pay for what Kim stole well actually he gives the money to Kel and Kel gives her the money because you know Sunny doesn't talk so how would he explain hey this should cover what she stole so yeah Kel gives her the money and candy shop girl is like fine I'll let her slide this time I know some people are going to hate every little difference from game to manga because that's just how people are but I actually like it to some extent as long as they don't stray too far from it because as someone who already knows the story this is more fun to read to me because things are happening a little differently in ways that you know we we don't expect I like that so far it hasn't strayed too terribly far from the game so she owes Kel now and agrees to tell them where Aubrey is so we find out uh, that Aubrey's in church so they go to the church go inside and see Aubrey sitting there and they sit on the bench behind her and start whispering to her to give back the photo album. So I think they're both in the wrong here because for one, yeah, I suppose she shouldn't have taken the photo album, but at the same time, they're bothering her in church of all places. Then again, if they don't confront her here and now, they won't find her again for a while, I imagine, since, you know, they're not really connected anymore. So I guess I do get them barging into church, uh, and doing this to some extent so kel is saying we all used to be friends why are you being like this and she says unsurprisingly no we're not friends anymore kel so then kel brings up mari and says mari would be really sad to hear that from her and after that this literally just erupts into a massive argument in the middle of fucking church obviously we can't hear them arguing right but judging by their faces and how this is all drawn you could tell that they're not whispering anymore they are just full-blown screaming at each other it's very clear in the middle of the church so in the game they argue and it turns into an actual fight like an in-game battle that you have uh, with aubrey to, that you have to beat to progress uh in the manga it's just an argument which i think makes more sense in this case anyway like them fist fighting in this church would be a little much i think a little too anime so they're literally screaming at each other the people in the church clearly hear them fighting and they start gossiping saying what's up with those kids her clothes are inappropriate for church where are their parents and aubrey can hear all of this also one of the one of them says something like i recognize her she she became a delinquent after her father left i feel bad for her mother something like that so she hears all this gets up and starts to leave something i didn't notice at first was that i think she starts crying here you can see that what looks like tears in this panel i honestly feel really bad for aubrey she's an asshole now sure but clearly she's clearly so troubled and damaged even after all this time and the fact that they've been able to convey that so well is impressive especially for an adaption of an rpg maker game she's mean she's angry she's genuinely an asshole but you can tell she's going through so much that you can hardly blame her of course newcomers don't know completely why she's being this way yet but that's kind of besides the point a lot of the time they make these almost tsundere like characters i don't think that's the correct term I'm, I'm looking for but they make these characters appear like they're a bad mean-spirited person and a lot of the time they focus so much on them being mean-spirited that they don't show any of the more positive aspects of them if that makes sense so they'll just make a character that you're pretty much forced to dislike because why would you like them and then suddenly however many chapters or episodes later they open up and you start to understand why they are the way they are that is not the case here 
uh, Aubrey isn't one dimensional at all. You can tell there are a lot of layers to why she's being the way she is and we're a measly three chapters in. I think that's impressive. You can tell she's just trying to get her shit together. I mean, she's literally attending church. Like, you can't hate her. I mean, you can. I'm sure some people do actually, but how they are handling this in the manga, I like. So Kel yells at everyone in the church, we can hear you, so shut the fuck up because you don't know the, the situation. <laughs> Aubrey is leaving the church and Sunny sees she's clearly upset and does this weird like half hug thing i'm a little confused what's happening here i think he was trying to comfort her but she shoves him away aubrey walks out and says i'm sorry about the album i threw it away so kel gets the bright idea to search every garbage bin in the town then we go back to headspace and if you recall basil is missing so they discuss where to look for him and whatnot and hero conveniently pulls out a map of the world <laughs> and then we get to see this panel definitely my favorite panel from this chapter because you can see a lot of the areas from the game that will hopefully be featured later on in the manga you can see the other world i believe that's sweetheart's castle basil's house the playground i'm not sure what this tetris looking area is maybe that's north lake i don't know i'm probably wrong about that i'm sure there's multiple areas i'm missing here but this was a some really cool foreshadowing they decide to start looking for basil by going up the enormous ladder that you can see here and then they remember sunny is afraid of heights and that is the chapter that's it um, I really like this chapter. I mean, so far, uh, the only chapter I wasn't crazy about was the very first one. Uh, I feel like it's only gotten better since then. So yeah, pretty positive on this one. So let me know what you guys think. And also, if you can recognize any other areas on the world map uh, panel, I would love to know what you guys think they are. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.